My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people want to make friends? I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and teach. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. What's the difference between a speculative stock and a blue chip stock in the age of COVID? The whole market's being upended by the pandemic. The lines, they are shifting. Formerly rock-solid companies are now on dangerous footing. Formerly speculative outfits have become titans of emerging industries. Sometimes, though, it's pretty hard to tell the difference. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened today with the Dow declining 78 points. S&P advancing 0.50%, but most importantly, the Nasdaq with a record close of 0.95%. Allow me to explain through the prism of today's action. If you want to understand this market, the single most important fact is that new COVID cases are exploding. They're back above 40,000 yesterday, somewhere between 44,000 and record-breaking 48,000, depending on your source. And it really didn't matter to the averages. So why the heck didn't the stock market go into a tailspin? Our country has, hands down, the worst response to this pandemic of any nation on Earth. With a few notable exceptions, like Rhode Island, every level of government has dropped the ball. And it's not just the government. We keep dropping the ball as citizens, too. With our flippant approach to wearing masks and social distancing, we just don't believe, some don't believe, that this matters. Hey, listen, we don't have a lot of weapons against the virus. Let's use what we can do. Pandemic's out of control. After sacrificing so much to bend the curve of this virus, it's going exponential again. And our politicians are paralyzed because they don't want to go back into lockdown. They don't want to make make it illegal to go outside without a mask. What are you going to do? You have to arrest the president. This is a terrible situation for our country, isn't it? It's really bad for the economy as a whole. But incredibly, that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad for the stock market. And this is bad money. Think of the stock market like a casino for a moment, unless you already do. When COVID cases spike, people don't cash in their chips and go home, do they? No, they go where the action is. They go where the hot tables are, the hot slots, the hot wheels. They follow that. First FedEx surged 12% today. It's a good place to start because it's a hot table. After a string of earnings misses, FedEx finally delivered a blowout quarter last night because of COVID. Somebody's got to deliver all these packages. Ground service was up 25% year over year thanks to e-commerce. U.S. residential volumes increased by a stunning 72%. I mean, the ripples are huge here. Just on this one call, you can buy Amazon, which was up 119 points. How about Kramer favorite Shopify, up 67 points. Craft site Etsy, other e-commerce uh, facilitators, Adobe, Wix.com, Fastly, Salesforce. Most of these stocks were up between 4 and 6%, although laggers like Fastly, Adobe, and Salesforce only rallied 1% to 2%. Wow. Is this rank speculation? Actually, no. With those numbers from FedEx, everything related to e-commerce and the stay-at-home economy can roar. ServiceNow, Okta, CrowdStrike, Coupa, RingCentral, you name it. Netflix tackled on another 30 points today. Video games caught fire, too. Why not? Second hotter area, well, we got some great news from Pfizer. They're conducting human trials for the COVID vaccine, and so far everyone in the study has immunity. That's just 24 people. Pfizer's a serious no-hype kind of company, and the vaccine data sent that stock up more than 3%. If we can get a vaccine sooner than expected, that's used for vast swaths of the economy, although it's terrible for the smaller vaccine players, which is why they got eviscerated. FedEx and Pfizer are blue chips that spurred all sorts of high-flying stocks to become even more expensive, and with good reason. What else? How can I not talk about Tesla? It's a company I love. Rallied almost 40 points today. This is now a $207 billion business, larger than Toyota, the largest car company on earth. Tesla, what, it makes 400,000 cars? Toyota makes 10 million? Uh, but the action in Tesla makes perfect sense if you view it as a technology company rather than an automaker. If you want to book some profit on this one, by the way, which I recommended 850 points ago, feel free. How about Facebook? Lately, a bunch of consumer packaged goods companies have pulled their ads because they don't want their products associated with hate speech. Today, though, Mark Zuckerberg said he's going to meet directly with the organizations leading the boycott. And more important, I think, he's bringing in a third party to gauge the company's commitment to doing the right thing. Bingo, stock rallied more than 4%. All these companies have compelling stories. If the stock market's a casino, these high-quality winners are like the blackjack tables. They're games of skill, not games of pure chance. You do the work, you study the fundamentals, you stay disciplined, and you can make money. Over the long term. However, there are also the super speculative names that feel more like the roulette table. 
Or maybe, you know what, they actually feel more like the scratch-off lottery tickets that are some preordained winners and lots of losers. Let me give you some examples. You know what, why don't we call it the pick six? Because these are all classic lotto stocks. There are tons of single-digit names popular, say, on Robinhood. I can't mention them on air. Why? Too tiny. But even the larger ones, I find them worrisome. First, there's Workhorse. Workhorse is a bit of a show horse, if you ask me. This is a technology company that's focused on providing drone integrated electric vehicles for the last mile delivery of cloud based real time telematics monitoring. Well, if that sounds impenetrable to you, just think electric trucks. Does Workhorse make money? <laughs> you get it. It's losing a fortune! Sell, sell, sell. But who cares? Stock's up 5% for the year. It's got a tiny float, 73 million shares, 73. And it traded 123 million shares today. That's insane. A month or two ago, one or two million shares might change hands in a given day. Today it was 124 million. Yesterday, 165 million. The day before, it was 129 million. When I see Workhorse up another 10% today, much, much of the gain after the bell, I say, makes me nervous. But hey, it could double. I mean, that goes. <laughs> double, cut in half. Hey, Scratch off, remember. Second, there's uh, NIO, NIO. Uh, it builds itself as a Chinese Tesla, though their uh, track record is a lot less impressive. NIO's up almost 100% for the year, and while the company actually has revenues, still losing boatloads of money. Goldman Sachs like it, I think. <laughs> Third, how about Tortoise Acquisition? Tortoise Acquisition Corp. Oh, yeah. Okay, though this stock actually ended up losing 8% today, but only after an insane move over the past few days. Tortoise is a special purpose acquisition vehicle, a SPAC, that's in the process of acquiring Helion. That's another electric truck play. They make powertrain solutions. Tortoise Acquisition was uh, worth a lot more than the hair. It was worth $10 before the Helion uh, news zoomed to 34 before pulling back to 25 today. Regular viewers know I'm a little worried about these red hot SPAC deals, uh, but you know what? Uh, they give you a big pop uh, right out of the gate, then come back to Earth. Uh, for, you know, Twitter's kind of reminds me of number four, uh, Nikola. That's another SPAC play. Uh, they they got to do the electric truck space. You, you notice a common pattern here? Incredibly speculative. Nikola's got lots of truck orders, but it hasn't yet sold a, a, a truck. Stock pulled back 2%, actually considered a good sign. Uh, finally, we've got a couple of vaccines. Uh, there's VBI vaccines. This is another one that got hit today because Pfizer's now leading in the race for COVID vaccine. VBI actually has a tiny bit of revenue, even though it's burning cash. I got to tell you, I don't like the early stage COVID vaccine plays. There's only room for one winner here, really. So the whole group's high, high risk. More than that tomorrow. And I, I do believe that there'll be a couple winners. But the, finally, there's my, maybe my favorite. Vaxart. Yeah, it's another vaccine developer. They make oral flu vaccines. See, Vaxart was picked up to be in Trump's warp speed COVID-19 project. And now the stock's up, up, I don't know, what, 2,100% this year. The darn thing just triples his hit. It got hit hit hard today, though, because you don't want to be the next Inovio when Inovio is down 26% in one day. You don't want to be a a no-vaxxer. There are plenty of others just like these six. Everyone's hunting for the next Tesla or the next Inovia, or at least Inovia before today. Some of them are king for a day. Others just seem like mistakes. The bottom line, there's the same part of this market where high-quality stocks were because they benefit from the stay-at-home economy. Think about all that FedEx pin action. Then there's the crazy part of the market that's driven by rampant speculation, and that's a very different and ultimately, some would say, likely ill-fated story. But, man, they're having a good time over there. <laughs> Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.